Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, this week's seminar at the Geary Institute for Public Policy. Um, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Aileen Murphy from um, Cork University Business School. She's also a lecturer, a senior lecturer in economics at the uh, Department of Economics in Cork University. Um, she uh, lectures on economics, health economics, uh, specifically economic evaluations. Um, she's authored several articles uh, and reports on health technology uh, assessments and economic evaluations, including systematic reviews for the Department of Health and the NCEC in Ireland. And she's also done work for uh, the NHS in Scotland, uh, some other work in the UK and the European uh, Commission on cost effectiveness of health technologies and health costing financing. So today, um, Aileen is going to present work on assessing healthcare costs when restricted to self-reported data, a scoping review. And again, as usual, can I remind the audience that uh, questions are to be directed through the Q&A format and we will come to them at the end of Aileen's presentation. So without further ado, Aileen, over to you. Great, thank you, uh, Darren. And thank you very much for the, the invite to, to present um, with you today. And thanks for everyone for, for coming along. Um, so as the introduction uh, alluded to there, um, this is a, an area where looking at, at costing and, and conducting costing is something that I come across um, quite a lot um, in my work. And today, uh, the work that I'm presenting um, is some joint work uh, that I conducted with um, Leanne and Brendan, my colleagues in, in UCC, along with Professor Jan Sorensen in the RCSI and, and his colleagues, Samir and Gintara. And um, I suppose this, this is a product really of some unfunded collaboration that we, we undertook. It began um, when Jan was a, a co-applicant on a HRB application um, that, that I put together a couple of years ago. Many of you might have been uh, aware of it and uh, you know, fellow applicants, successful and unsuccessful um, in that HRB uh, call about using secondary data sources. And you know, for those of you that were involved at the time or, or had shown an interest, like this was, was a very exciting opportunity um, for us to, to to apply for funding um, for existing uh, data sets. And I think it really highlighted um, a gap that's out there and perhaps the underutilization of a lot of data that, that we have available. So that was, I suppose, the, the inspiration and the starting point for this work. Um, we were unsuccessful in our, in our tender, um, but we didn't let that stop us. And we've um, continued to do some work in the area to try and get a better um, handling on, on the question that we were looking at and, and trying to, to make some inroads in the area, um, albeit unfunded. And so it's, it's kind of piecemeal work that, that we've been doing. This particular paper is currently under review um, and we were hoping to hear back shortly from the, the reviewers and, and the editor of the, of the journal. Um, so we will be having the opportunity, I'm sure, to, to, to revise and, and upgrade. So any questions or comments um, that you have today would be greatly appreciated. So I'm sure we have plenty of time for that afterwards. So I suppose to, to begin, as I said, you know, I mentioned that, that HRB funding um, call, but specifically, you know, sure many of you are aware when it comes to, to cost analysis um, the, of healthcare resources, they, they can provide very useful information about current allocation um, of resources and can help inform future decisions um, and even debates about future allocation of healthcare resources. But of course, in order to do that in a meaningful and, and feasible way, we need to have reliable information about cost and resource use. And having reliable, trustworthy, robust information is crucial when it comes to um, informing decisions about rationing and, and efficient healthcare planning. Those of you that um, work in the health economics and economic evaluation sphere will be familiar with the um, method guides that exist in different jurisdictions for conducting economic evaluations. But when it comes to the costing um, components of those or standalone costing studies, um, there can be inconsistencies with respect, with respect to 
the methods and the approaches that are undertaken. And of course, the problem then is that with different methods and different approaches, we can get different results. So over the past number of years, there's been some calls to have more consistency and efficient uh, costing methods uh, in, in response to this. Now we know that the two general approaches that can be taken um, can be a top-down or, or bottom-up approach. And in taking a top-down approach to, to costing, researchers are typically relying on centralized data repositories, such as hospital patient record files. And when it comes to doing bottom-up costing, we're relying on data that's collected directly from healthcare users through surveys or, or diaries. And when we're in a, a system where we don't have electronic health records and um, that are linkable between different systems and, and different um, tiers of the health system with patient identifiers, often researchers are relying on collecting primary data or using secondary um, healthcare user data to inform bottom-up costing. A recent review by the OECD found that Ireland um, was one of the few OECD countries that lacks a comprehensive system of unique patient and provider identifiers. And despite best efforts to implement electronic health records, the report found that data in Ireland is not regularly captured in national statistics, monitoring health systems, performance, patient safety, or public health. Now we know, um, you know on the ground that progress is being made on rolling out um, health identifiers. And particularly, this is happening in a number of national health services. But I suppose the implementation and the adoption of this is, is slow and it's fragmented. So while it's happening in some sections, in some, um, at some tiers, the integration and how, or even how all of these will be integrated is yet to be defined. So in that, that review, they found that over 95% of primary care offices had electronic health records. This was lowered to between 50 and 60% when it came to um, emergency departments and lower again, um, you know, between 30 and 40% when it came to inpatient services. And crucially then, there was a lack of interoperability and often that data was fragmented and uh, reports were inaccessible. So when we started to think about this, perhaps somewhat naively, we thought that maybe there was a data desert that we didn't have enough information. But I suppose quickly we began to realize um, and to, to borrow the, the imagery and analogy from Mirish um, O'Connor at a recent ESRI symposium, it's more like a data blizzard. And Mirish quoted Dr. Tara Johnson, a specialist in public health at that seminar a couple of weeks ago, saying, well, we've lots of data with little information, less insight. And for us, what this came to mean was that yeah, there's lots of data out there, but the records can't be linked. This yields barriers then to fully developing um, and using top-down costing approaches. And if we appreciate these challenges aren't unique to Ireland, but I suppose what the OECD report highlighted was, you know, in their taking cumulatively, it was quite unique. And the, the challenge this presents then is that it can be difficult to get comprehensive descriptions of costs and resource use at local or national level to inform um, those policy and practice planning that we mentioned earlier. And, you know, cumulatively putting all these challenges together, it can be difficult to allocate types of costs and resource use to individual uh, patient care. And as I said, then informing those decisions. So what this means then, the, these challenges and, and this, this environment is that for anyone trying to do a costing study on healthcare utilization in Ireland, the, the options are quite limited. If you want to do a top-down um, approach, you need to get data from all those individual providers. And assuming you can get a foot in the door to get it, it's going to be then met with a very high administrative and, and resource burden. The alternative is to use uh, self-reported user bottom-up data, which can be collected from general population surveys or from disease-specific surveys and then extrapolated to the general um, population level. And in general, there, there is a, a notion that, you know, having or using data on healthcare utilization and cost measures collected from surveys can lack uh, precision. 
However, it, they often are a representation of the best uh, data that's available on the care costs. So this is where th this study came in then, is really we wanted to do a scoping review to explore the use of self-reported healthcare service utilization and cost data to assess healthcare costs in Ireland, to see, you know, is this being done? How is it being done? Who's doing it? And in doing so, we, we also set the aim of developing an inventory of the Irish population health surveys that, that are out there, and then to, to match this against the scope of view to see which ones are being used, with a view to informing future research um, and to, to highlight what surveys are available and that, that could be used. So our, our methods then, our, our search um, was in two parts. The, the darker grey um, first row there shows um, in relation to searching for the surveys. So we set about searching websites and repositories, including the ISSDA, Safe Food, CSO, Department of Health. And essentially, we're looking for population surveys that contained data pertaining to health, healthcare utilisation or healthcare related costs. Um, having identified the surveys, then we went to the survey websites, looked at the original questionnaires to review them, and we put together a list or an inventory of all of those surveys. The second part then was um, scoping of, of the literature. So we undertook a PubMed search, um, looking for 10 years um, to get a, a sense of studies that had been published about um, costs of healthcare use and where they were using self-reported uh, questionnaires to, to do this. So to facilitate this, we initially searched, we used MESH uh, terms cost and questionnaire, and then we supplemented this by using cost and used the full name and abbreviations of the identified population health surveys from part one. We supplemented the PubMed search looking at the grey literature and again here we were looking at our websites and, and repositories for any reports and scientific papers that the, the, med, um, the PubMed search uh, didn't, didn't yield. With regards then um, to, to analysing the, the search results, um, so we had uh, for the the surveys, first of all, we extracted information on the data collection tools that we, we use in surveys, uh, the sample characteristics, the type of healthcare services which the data were collected, um, also any demographic information, socioeconomic, health status and lifestyle variables that were collected as part of the, the survey. We collated this then in, in inventory. As for the PubMed search and the Grey List research, so we followed the, the PRISMA guidelines in, in doing the scope and review here. And we had two of our researchers independently review the abstracts of all the retrieved citations. They initially charted um, basic information about the underlying data set and the availability of data on healthcare utilization and costs. And then uh, the full text studies and reports were retained if they used survey or other self-reported data on healthcare utilization or costs and including patients direct out-of-pocket costs and secondly then if the if they use data to assess direct healthcare costs we applied the exclusion criteria that are shown there on the right hand side um, so if it was a, a publication um, not about ireland costs in ireland or if it was outside the time period being considered we also excluded any intervention studies that reported treatment costs, like clinical trials, for example. Uh, patient registry studies were excluded, studies with simulations or decision trees and Markov models, studies that were applying primary data from another jurisdiction to an Irish setting were excluded, and also then we, we excluded protocols. So look at the, the results then. Firstly, with regards to our, our surveys. So overall, we found 21 population surveys or survey tools from the Irish uh, data repositories. And these reported on health status, health utilization or healthcare costs. And they're listed there on the, the right hand side. Um, so some of these you'll be very familiar with, I'm sure. 
We also found um, an additional four surveys that used, used ad hoc, that we used on an ad hoc basis to inform an assessment of direct healthcare costs. I'll, I'll talk about those um, later. So with regards to this, this list of 21, um, the earliest of these started collecting data in the 1970s, so the, the census, and approximately half of them include repeated longitudinal or cross-sectional uh, data collection. So before I, I take you to an overview um, or a summary of them, just to give you, um, I'll, I'll go through the overview now. Um, so we had a, a range of, um, of, of surveys and the uh, sample size in them ranged from just 100 participants in an ad hoc survey, the ACAD, as part of the ACAD study, to thousands of participants in the more nationally representative longitudinal studies like growing up in Ireland, um, TILDA, cross-sectional uh, repeated surveys like the Irish Health Survey, the USILC, and then with some national single-use surveys that also had thousands of participants like the All-Ireland Traveller Health Study and the Irish Study of Sexual Health and Relationships. With regards to the, the surveys then, um, uh, most of them included data on primary care use and more than half had information on the specialist service. Fewer than had information on medicinal products or outpatient service use and fewer again then in relation to uh, department, emergency department visits and, and length of stay. And almost all of the surveys had information on socio-demographics and demographics. Um, and as well as lifestyle variables then and health status as well. So there the, I suppose the, the high level overview of the features of, of the surveys and they put together in the, the inventory. So I had there on the, the previous slides, the, the list on, on the clipboard, um, but we have produced a, a table um, with all of this information for each survey as well as part of the inventory. I'm happy to share that with anybody afterwards. Back to the scoping review then. So our list review initially identified 247 abstracts um, and reports. So this is from the, the PubMed search. And um, we went through these then, screening the, the titles and, and abstracts and working down to um, 68 were deemed eligible for a full text review. And from these then 11 were included um, at the end. Also from the review of the grey literature, uh, two reports were added and from a cross-referencing, um, one additional study was included as well. So that brought us up to 14. All of these were published um, between 2009 and, and 2018 and they covered eight conditions. And interestingly, of our inventory of 21 surveys, only four of them were included across these 14 studies. And these were growing up in Ireland, QNHS, Sloan, and Tilda. So um, before kind of summarizing the, the findings, and just to, to walk you through um, the, the studies from a, a high level. So increasingly these are quite detailed tables, but just to give you a flavor of the studies that we had, so they're presented here in, in alphabetical order. So um, Looking there at, at the first three, uh, the first two, we have uh, Kearney and uh, Kaelicher. So the Kearney um, text looked at multiple cirrhosis. They used an ad hoc dedicated questionnaire. So they used the client services receipt inventory. So some of you may be familiar with this, a validated questionnaire um, that extracts quite detailed um, self-reported information on healthcare utilization. So there in the fourth column, you can see it covers inpatient care, nursing home, rehab, respite, uh, various investigations, visits to primary care and to hospital um, and allied health, um, as well as uh, AIDS and so on. In this study, they supplemented that self-reported um, information with data on, on medication. And they use these then combined to do a bottom-up costing with the societal perspective. Kaelicker then, um, on the other hand, also used a, an ad hoc dedicated survey. This is time was amongst um, patients with colorectal cancer, and they used uh, the patient economic impact questionnaire, another validated questionnaire. 
here their perspective was on the patient only and they their analysis um, only employed data from that, that questionnaire. They didn't supplement it with anything else and they also did a bottom of costing. Um, Connolly looking at dementia and the, the ACAT study, again, they, they supplemented the self-reported data with data from other sources um, and did a societal perspective and they used a combination of top-down and bottom-up costing. Moving on then, um, so studies by Dee and Doherty looking at overweight and obesity, using Sloan and QNHS, um, Doherty and O'Neill looking at osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, used TILDA, Again, look at multiple sclerosis. Fogarty used the client services receipt inventory um, questionnaire again, as did Gannon when looking at chronic pain amongst non-cancer um, patients. Um, across this um, sample, and these studies from our, from our uh, review, um, only one of them was supplementing the self-reported data with uh, other data. And again, it's a mix of perspectives used and the majority, all of them here, actually using uh, bottom-up costing only. Um, moving on then, so Gillespie is looking at Alzheimer's disease and it's part of the ACAD study, and they used um, the resource utilization dementia light instruments or another validated um, disease-specific questionnaire. Um, and, and Perry used uh, growing up in Ireland, looking at childhood obesity and the Epicure study um, was looking at a uh, preterm, extremely preterm birth weights in, in infants. Rafferty, again, through chronic pain and non cancer, they also used the client services receipt inventory, and Richardson then uh, used data from, from Tilda. So, again, this just to give you a, a flavor, I suppose, a very quick um, overview of, of those studies. But I suppose the, the, the summary um, measures then you can see. The perspective that's been used is varying amongst these. Um, so the, the most um, frequently used perspectives used were the full societal or healthcare, um, followed by partial societal, and then the remaining studies had a, adopted a public sector perspective, and only one study adopted a, a patient perspective. Um, with regards to the, the costing um, approaches that, that we used, um, 84% of the studies employed bottom-up uh, methodology only, whereas um, fewer then employed a combination of bottom-up and, and top-down. And I'll talk about combining data sources in a moment, but those that were combining the bottom-up and top-down um, approaches typically were, were getting data from a variety of, of different sources, or they were supplementing the self-reported data um, with, with other, other data administrative data. With regards to uh, the, the, the uh, data sources then, so um, 10 of the studies employed a, a single survey only and of these seven used ad hoc surveys and three used validated questionnaires. Of those that used multiple surveys, um, some of these had supplemented their surveys with estimates from small local studies or from published reviews. One used multiple surveys and three then used their survey data on self-reported uh, utilization along with administrative um, data. So you can see the variety of different data sources being used. Um, and as I said, this would then inform the type of methodology um, that was being used as well. With regards to the, the services that were included then, uh, the survey data um, were, more were most frequently used to assess the cost of primary care, including general practitioner services, which was most frequently um, used, followed by the cost of hospital or residential care, including outpatient and emergency department visits and, and medications. Seven of the studies included specialist community services and other healthcare professionals. Um, however, only two of the studies actually costed these. So the others just reported utilization of those services. So what we see is that there is variability in the range of healthcare services included um, when relying on one data source. 
um, but there's a greater range of services can be included when a specific validated instrument like that client um, receipt services inventory questionnaire is employed. However, when a questionnaire like that has been used, um, it is going to be across a smaller sample size and for a very specific population. So for example, um, if, if costing something like osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis, the choice of healthcare services considered is going to be limited if we're relying on um, one data set like Tilda, for example, which of course, um, you know, isn't designed specifically for arthritis, is a, a much broader scope. So in using um, the data sets like that, we are confined to the, the range of services that are included within them. So I suppose following on from, from that idea, um, 12 of the 14 studies that were included in the scoping review did discuss uh, these data type issues that we were interested in in their own, um, in their own uh, work as well. And the concerns, that I've summarized them here, and I suppose many of them had concerns about the absence of resource use data in Ireland. Those that use a dedicated ad hoc surveys did acknowledge the low response rates with them and the potential for sampling bias in using them. And also pointed to the incomplete data um, that, that can be um, you know, with them, particularly with, if they're small, uh, dedicated ad hoc surveys. Those that are using population surveys did, um, I suppose they pointed to the, the lack of suitable longitudinal cross-sectional data to inform reliable bottom-up estimates. They also pointed to um, the over-reliance on dichotomous utilization measures. So did you see the GP? Yes or no. Did you have a stay in an inpatient setting? Yes or no. And I suppose the, the limitations that they come with those sorts of questions um, that they're giving only very small uh, piece of information. And also then the limited range of services that are included in those uh, population, population surveys. As I mentioned there, some of the studies employed mixed methodologies. So they employed both bottom up and top down um, costing uh, methodologies. And those that did this attributed um, you know, the, the, the necessity of doing this to uh, the availability of data um, that, that was available to them. Now, of those who, who only employed uh, bottom-up, they, they did express concerns concerning the generalizability of those results outside the, the patient populations being, being surveyed. Researchers also pointed to concerns about recall bias. Um, and of course, this is something that's inevitable if we're relying on self-reported data as opposed to a registry, for example. And in particular, uh, recall bias um, was, was extended where surveys were completed on behalf of patients. So in some instances, proxies were used, parents or, or carers to complete um, the, the surveys. And this, of course, is introducing another layer of bias there as well. Interestingly, um, uh, three of the studies also um, referred to kind of general issues in doing costing studies um, in Ireland. Um, three highlighted the lack of reference costs for Ireland. So while the, the focus up to now, we've been predominantly about the utilization data, of course, in any costing study, we have to value the resources that are being used as well. Um, and this is, um, I suppose, a bit more complicated without a reference cost list. And also one study highlighted um, the fragmented nature of healthcare systems and how the data is captured and preventing linkages. Um, so as I discussed that at, at the, the outset. Now we too recognize that there are um, some limitations to, to the work that, that we've conducted. Um, so while we used a systematic search strategy, we had broad search criteria and by including both peer reviewed and gray literature, um, we hope to minimize the risk, but we do acknowledge um, that we may not capture all studies assessing healthcare costs using self-reported healthcare use data in Ireland. But I suppose, you know, to highlight, we didn't aim to achieve a, a complete 
list of, of the existing studies. Um, nevertheless, we, we did employ cross-referencing and we did do some consistency checks to try and minimize the, the risk of bias, but we do acknowledge um, that it's not a complete list of, of, of studies that have conducted um, a, a use of reported data to estimate costs. Also, with regards to our inventory, um, we did use broad search strategy, but we acknowledge that there is a risk um, that some surveys may be missing from the inventory. And we, we would hope and, and would encourage researchers to, to amend the list and, and to publish an extended inventory um, if, if applicable. Furthermore, um, it's important to acknowledge, I suppose, that in our analysis, we, we weren't undertaking um, methodological quality checks on the, the underlying survey data. Um, so we're not assessing the quality of the surveys that were being used. It was more exploring um, the, the types of surveys that were being used and, and the frequency um, that, that they were being, being used. So, um, alongside those, those uh, limitations, I suppose we, we do have some, some lessons or some learnings coming about and some observations from our, the, the review. We put together, as I said, um, from a, a review of the, the surveys that are out there, we put together the, the inventory and collated them here on the, on the notice board. Um, and I suppose really, you know, what we're seeing is that there is a lot of surveys out there um, that, that could be used, but our review showed that only four of these um, have been used in the, the published literature that, that we sourced. And you know, I suppose we, we, we've shown that there have, we do have um, nationally representative data sets that have large sample sizes that do provide data on health service utilization, along with health status, demographics, socioeconomic and lifestyle information. And, you know, several of these do involve repeated cross-sectional or even longitudinal survey waves, but they're, they're not being used perhaps to, to their full potential. So this led us to, I suppose, to, to think and reflect upon this and why might this be the case? And keeping in mind the, the discussion points that were raised by um, the authors of, of each of the, the reviews as well. So is it the case that, they, that they're not fit for purpose? So I mentioned um, the idea of having binary questions in there, for example. So are, are they not fit for, for purpose? Or is there a perception that, the, that they're not fit for purpose? And then you know, be, because of this idea, is it that every time a, a costing study is being done, it's felt that we need to have dedicated data collection um, exercise to collect primary data. But of course, we know there's limitations to this as well. And again, this was highlighted um, by the authors in, in several of those studies that there's limitations with doing this small sample size, um, you know, uh, sample selection bias is in there and how generalizable are the results the, the general population. So while these the surveys is, exist, um, many of them are publicly uh, available and you know, we found them to, to public uh, repositories and, and so on. Is it that there's, there's low awareness? Is it that people aren't aware that they're there, they're not aware of the, the data that's in them and their potential um, uses. And we hope, of course, this paper and the inventory will help overcome some of those awareness issues. It also could be that there's access barriers. So, you know, is it the case that some, some of the variables are available, but not all the variables are available? So is there issues in, in accessing um, some of the individual level data? We also pose the question of, you know, is there biases um, around, um, around, around funding opportunities for existing um, data sets? So, you know, as I said at the outset, the, the inspiration behind this work and, and the collaboration between ourselves and UCC and our colleagues in RCSI um, came about because of a, a, a very exciting opportunity to apply for funding around existing data sets. But, is there a bias towards collecting or generating uh, new data um, when it comes to funding calls in, in Ireland? I'd be interested if anyone has any views or opinions on, um, on this. 
somewhat encouragingly, however, we did find that surveys that were designed or administrated uh, to research institutes were more likely to be used um, in the cost studies we identified. So the likes of Ireland, Tilda, and so on. And, and that is encouraging. And I suppose it, it suggests opportunities for um, future data collection or for, for new surveys that may be, um, may be designed going forward. And having researchers and including health economists involved early in the survey design perhaps could um, increase the usability of those, those surveys going forward. So while we have the, these surveys, um, they, the challenges around the lack of standardization and interoperability of Irish health data um, still persists. And you know, while there is plans for reform, it's quite a crude image here of, of what that reform might look like, um, you know, details about the full implementation of that really are unknown. And we know there is efforts, discuss those at the outset towards electronic health records as well. But again, you know, the, the devil is in the detail as they, as they say. And, you know, we, we have um, efforts towards that reform, like the data depository, the eHealth Ireland open data portal that provides information health service use, but this is limited to particular services. Um, and um, you know, it's is, is quite limited at the moment. We know there's many other um, individual level uh, initiatives underway and digital solutions being proposed to manage data, connect health information within and across service providers. But again, I suppose adoption is slow and, and that linkability tends not to be there. But we have some very positive um, initiatives like the National Medical Laboratory Information System, the Digital Ambulance Project, Primary Care IT, and so on. But I suppose the, 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 the basic issue um, around these is, is remaining that the, the linkability bit between them um, is going to take time. And while the National Electronic Health Record System remains incomplete, the availability of integrated comprehensive data for research purposes like we're discussing here um, is, is going to take time. So for jurisdictions like Ireland, where we, we are still waiting um, on having um, an integrated, um, less fragmented data system, um, probably are going to be reliant on the self-reported um, surveys for some time when we're conducting cost analysis. And while there, there can be issues, as we said, or, you know, they are suboptimal um, with uh, representatives, recall bias and, and so on, um, you know, they, they probably are the best that we have available. Some of the other work um, that our collaboration has undertaken, um, as we did, we did a, a small um, empirical piece using Danish data, and we found that there was very little difference in the precision of cost estimates derived from using registry data and using well-designed survey questions. So while we're, all of these initiatives are, are under progress, um, I suppose what we've hoped we hope that we have shown here is that the, the studies and the surveys that, that we found in this review can be used as a good practice guide to inform future survey development to enable comprehensive assessment of healthcare costs. And particularly when it comes to longitudinal and repeated cross-sectional surveys in their combined form, they can actually be used to provide representative estimates of healthcare um, use and enabling cost comparisons across groups and, and time. But I suppose it's important that any future studies or future surveys rather um, that are being designed or adapted, current ones being adapted, that they are meaningful and, and fit for purpose. And one way of, of going about this is perhaps having multi-stakeholder involvement in them in, the, in their design or refitting. Um, to avoid really future underutilization of these surveys. Um, and again, one way of doing that would be to ensure that they adhere to the, the, fair, the fair principles. So I suppose in conclusion, we, we've identified um, the 21 uh, surveys, um, the 14 studies that looked at self-reported uh, data. We're seeing that there is underutilization of the surveys that, it, that exist at the moment, but the surveys that are available have the potential to be used for estimating healthcare costs in, in Ireland. We've 
collated all of those um, in an inventory that we hope will be useful to researchers going forward and that will be a live document and can be updated as any of these surveys um, are, are adapted um, or even if, if new ones are produced or as I said in the limitations if we've missed some. And really, you know, in the absence and while we're waiting for our electronic health records and our unique patient identifiers and to have um, a, a linkable um, system using our carefully designed healthcare surveys can be a useful tool for doing cost assessments. But we need to be mindful that we um, prevent further barriers being erected and, and try and break down the barriers that do exist around awareness of them, as well as um, accessing and, and usability of these surveys. So thank you very much. As I said um, at the outset, I'd be delighted to get any uh, comments or queries. Um, and I've included my email address here as well for anyone who wants to get in touch afterwards. Thank you very much, Aileen.